welcome back welcome to the morning back show. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. And uh, recently, President Muhammad Buhari made a promise to take 100 million Nigerians from poverty to prosperity mm -hmm. in the next 10 years. He further noted that his administration will ensure rapid and positive growth in the economy to, you know, move Nigeria away from poverty. Let's take a look at this. Our government elected by the people in 2015 and re-elected in March has been mapping our policies, measures, and laws to maintain our unity and at the same time lift the bulk of our people out of poverty and onto the road to prosperity. This task is by no means unattainable. China has done it. India has done it. Indonesia has done it. Nigeria can do it. <clears throat> With leadership and sense of purpose, we can lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. Following the 60% drop in oil prices between 2015 and 2016, through monetary and fiscal measures, we stimulated economic growth, curbed inflation, and showed up our external results. We now have witnessed eight quarters of positive growth in the economy, and our GDP is expected to grow by 2.7% this year. Furthermore, our external results have risen to 45 billion United States dollars, enough to finance over nine months of current import commitments. This administration is laying the foundation and taking bold steps in transforming our country and liberating our people from the shackles of poverty. President Wari noted, quote, we have witnessed eight quarters of positive growth in the economy and our GDP is expected to grow by 2.7% this year. Furthermore, our external reserves has risen to $45 billion, enough to finance over nine months of current input, end of quote. So joining us this morning to talk about this and more is Muda Yusuf, Director General, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI. Great to have you, sir. Thank you very much and good morning. <clears throat> Let's take it from that speech. Indonesia has done it. We all know how Indonesia did do it despite the 1997 credit crisis among Southeast Asian countries. Do you think we can do it? I think we can do it. I say that because if we have, we put the right things in place. Because all this is about, it's not so much about the aspiration or the dream. It's also about the strategy to deliver it. Uh, what could make the difference is whether we have the right kind of strategy to deliver it. Now, these countries that the president mentioned, apart from the policies of government, the investors played a very key role in the delivery of, you know, taking people out of poverty. Because poverty first has a relationship with employment. You know, there's a, there's a correlation between unemployment and poverty. And in order to create jobs, you need investors to do so. So the question to ask is, have we created the right kind of environment for investors? As was the case in these countries that the president has cited. That is one. Another critical uh, component of poverty alleviation is social investment. I'm not talking about social investment in the sense of just giving out money to people. Social investment in terms of investments in social infrastructure, you know, the social services sector. I'm talking now about investment in human capital. Because when you say you have a population that is huge, the population can only be an asset when the population is of quality. And the way you can get quality population is to invest in their education, to invest in their health. So we don't have a quality population in this country? We don't have. We don't have. And that is why we have the kind of problems we are having. I mean, look at the problems we are having, especially in the northern part of the country. 
which is already spreading to other parts, you know. We find that there is a, relation, a relationship or a correlation between investment in their human capital, the level of literacy, the level of unemployment, the level of poverty and insecurity. You can easily have a connection between all of these things. Because if you have quality population, the individual at least can be more creative. I'm not saying that if you have educated people, there cannot be violence. But the way they will relate with the environment, the creativity they will bring to their own personal survival will be, will be different. And the ability to also brainwash them will also be different. Well, you know? So all these things are critical. When you say we want to bring people out of poverty, I mean, talk to an average investor. The lady that just left here also narrated the experience that they have in their sector. You know, talk to those uh, who are in telecoms. It's part of what they are putting into this economy in terms of providing telecommunication services, in terms of paying taxes, in terms of creating jobs. They are going through a lot. Talk to those who are in the oil and gas sector. Well, you've talked about mm -hmm. strategy and uh, structure. Mm. Let's talk about perception. Um, it's a little over two weeks since the second term of President Muhammad Buhari started. Uh, there's no cabinet in sight yet. Uh, we don't know when that will happen, but tell us what sort of signal is that sending to the business community, especially for those who are depending on foreign direct investment, which you mentioned earlier? Well, uh, <clears throat> we can't say that it, the cabinet is not in sight. Mm. Maybe it's somewhere in a file that the president is waiting to just pull out. And well, we haven't to... seen it. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, so, maybe you've seen uh, the file. <laughs> yes, yes. But the, the point is that when you talk about investment, mm. The domestic investors are playing even much bigger role than foreign investment okay. or foreign investors in this economy. Okay. Over eighty percent of the jobs that are created in this economy are created by domestic investors. And as we say, charity should begin at home. Mm. When the domestic investors are doing well, the foreign investors will come and join. You know. To, to, to taste part of, part of the benefits mm. of prosperity. So when we are talking about, it's not just about foreign investment or domestic investment. We need to create the environment for everybody. And it is the quality of environment that you create, that you actually create the perception. Of course, forming the cabinet is good. Forming, I mean, putting the cabinet together on time is, is very important. But what is more important? is how our regulatory institutions are relating with investors. Because most of them, they don't appreciate the fact that they even need the investors to be able to achieve even all the aspirations that the government is promising. Many of them see investors as just a bunch of people who are there to just make money for themselves. They are not seeing the value that the investor is bringing into the social stability space by creating jobs. Some of them even don't appreciate the value that these investors are doing that are creating the revenue. The IGR in Lagos State is over, it's over 300 billion per annum. And it's investment in the it's, investors. It's, 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 it's the investors that are making this happen. And this can happen, we can replicate this in other, other, other parts of the country. So I take it that so this president's speech uh, yes. on democracy, they're talking about focusing on SMEs, industrialization, electricity in this term, brought smiles to faces in the business community. No, no, Did no. Did it give a sense that this administration, you know, was on the right track? No, 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 no. You see, speech is one thing. Mm. Delivery is another. Mm. I mean, the government has been there for four years. You know, so whatever you are going to be depending on in terms of the speech, you have to be informed by the record that you have. And in any case, uh, what matters to the average citizen, what matters to the investors, is actually what you do. What you say is important in terms of the signaling or the pointers that it gives in terms of the direction you are going. But what is more important it's what you do. I mean, we saw the experience that uh, MTN and some other uh, organization went through recently. 
We know the experience that people are going through in the hands of FIRS. I'm not saying that people should not pay tax. Mm. But when you create an environment of complete, you know, poor communication with the taxpayers, where an investor just wake up and your bank will tell you that your account has been frozen, there's a lien on your account, where there is no communication between the FRS and you that, okay, this is what you are owing, let us have a discussion. What you have is just that there is a lien on your account. So that is not the way to treat an investor. We have been battling now with, with the situation in, in the ports for close to two years or more. Because of the frustration that some investors have packed up their business. That rather than go through all this trouble, let me just gather my capital, let me go and buy treasure this. Mm. And be getting 15%, you don't pay tax on it, there is no risk on it. You just wake up and go and play golf and have your peace. But will that create jobs? No. no. So we are not, we are not, we are still not treating investors the way we should treat them. So this is happening at the level of the regulatory agencies. It's happening at the level of some institutions in government. It's also happen, happening at the even level of policy. It is good to say, okay, you want to backward integrate. You want to is what is made in Nigeria. You want to do what is made in Nigeria. Industries should go and buy their raw materials locally. But you need to create the environment for that to happen. It's not a question of just intimidate because you don't, you don't decree things in an economy. You make things happen in a very strategic way. But how, do, how do we make things you happen know? when the ease of doing business is quite very, very unexciting for investors in this country? And, and I'll give you an instance. And I know we'll go for a quick break and we'll come back from the break and you, mm -hmm. you're going to answer this. I cited this to a guest on this show that Uzbekistan as a nation moved 30 places in the cycle of one year on mm. the ease of doing business scale. But Nigeria, we still celebrate three places as something great. Can't mm. we move 45 places? Mm. Can't we be like the likes of Uzbekistan? Can't we, can't we innovate? Welcome back to the Morning Show here on the Rise News. We still have with us um, Lagos Chamber of Commerce um, Director General, Mr. Yeah. Muda Yusuf, with us in the studio. Thank All you right. for staying with us. And we're talking to, to uh, uh, Mr. Muda Yusuf uh, about economic prospects. And I was asking that why can't we move many places? I mean, ease of uh, doing in, on the ease of doing business index, you know, we're talking about Uzbekistan in the space of a year last mm. year that moved 30 places. I mean, why can't we have moved 60 places? Why can't we move 70 places? I mean, mm. If we have executive orders being signed by the vice president, it's okay, this is what we want to do. Can't we be intentional about this and make this place an investment haven? If you currently follow the Brexit debates, what are the candidates saying? We want to reduce you know, tax rates on corporate taxes in the UK now from about 20 something percent that it is today to about 12 percent because they want investors to come in. We knew that, we all know that the Irish economy, for instance, grew over 30 you know, points just from remittances of taxes of bigger companies, the likes of Google, and because Ireland is a haven for them. That is what is growing the Irish economy. Mm. Why can't we do that? We see all of these things. It happens. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a function of the appreciation of those fundamentals that drive investments by the political leadership. If these things are not properly appreciated, you are not likely to see that kind of disposition on the part of those who are you know, governing the, the, the country. Now, talking about the movement on the hierarchy of ease of doing business, uh, two years ago, there was also a major leap you know, uh, of about 24 places, which was significant. Yeah. You know. So that, I think we, we can acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Although subsequently the movement has not been that. But again, it takes a combination of a lot of factors. And secondly, let me also say this. The parameters of the ease of doing business sometimes don't capture the peculiarities of each country. For instance, in Nigeria, 
Security is a major factor in investment. Security is not a variable or it's not one of the parameters on the ease of doing business. You know, because these things are designed for societies where things work much better. So security is taken for granted, just as many other things are taken for granted. There are many parts of this country now that no investor will go because of security problems. And even the few investors that are there, some quite a number of them are leaving. We hear now that to build infrastructures of parts of the country, you need to add kidnapping costs. Only recently, Governor Yusuf Wiki told the community in River State that if they don't release a construction worker, that is going to stop a construction project being done for that community. Uh -huh. can, you, can you imagine that? This is a project that is, will benefit the community. And yet, those who are investing, those who are there to ensure the execution of the project, they, don't, don't have, they are not sure of, of their lives. They, they don't have security. So it's a major factor in investment. And unfortunately, we don't seem to have a very clear idea as to how to deal with this situation. Let's talk about because the situation seems to be deteriorating, mm. unfortunately, you know? Let's so these are, these, are, these are the things. Mm. Uh, Let's talk about another factor that's critical to investment, is the exchange rate structure uh, of the country. It seems to be a bit of confusion there, and I know you've been critical about that. Just last week, there was a report about, uh, from the Bloomberg <coughs> saying that the CBN was signaling a float of the Naira but that was quickly debunked by the CBN uh, through a text to our sister agency this day, saying, you know, there was nothing like that. They're not going to float the currency at this time, and the structure remained. What is your take on floating the Naira? You see, exchange rate is a price. Mm -hmm. And the price, price of anything all over the world is determined by the fundamentals of demand and supply. So whatever the exchange rate will be, if you want it to be sustainable, has to be supported or has to be determined by the, de by the fundamentals of the demand and supply. Mm. If you fix a rate at a level that the fundamentals cannot support, you will create a crisis for the country. Mm. That was the kind of crisis we had when we had the recession, when there's a sharp drop in, uh, in oil price. Yes. What is your price, yeah. And the CBN was struggling to retain the rates at a level that was not sustainable. It created a whole lot of crisis in the economy. Until after a lot of advocacy and conversation, we now had to relax that. We now created the iron E window and all of that. That now brought some sanity into the system. So the question is not whether you want to float or not. What is important is that because exchange rate is a price, it should reflect the fundamentals of your demand and your supply. If you don't have the capacity to fund the markets, mm. you don't go and fix an exchange rate at a point that you cannot meet supply. Mm. If you do that, you create a crisis because you find a situation where you have more demand mm. than you can meet. And if you face that kind of pressure, you now take the option of now rationing it mm. and in the process of rationing, all sorts of things will come into it, discretion, favoritism, bribery, corruption, transparency problems, and so on and so forth. Mm. This is the kind of crisis that it creates. Mm. So there is a reason when people say that you should allow your exchange rate to be determined by the market. Mm. Of course, there can be intervention here and there mm. to ensure that there is no serious volatility. But the market is very key, and that is one thing that the CBN has to realize. You mm. cannot fight the market. Mm. And you can't, you can't run an economy by fiat. You need policies, you need incentives, you need things to shape the behavior of investors. Let, let me take you on this real quickly. We had Dr. Tuli of CBN recently and was talking about the holy trinity mm. in economics, you know, mm. inflation rates and things like that. But it's as if the CBN is losing the inflation rates now or the market is taking over. We saw the inflation rate figures come out recently, mm. a little increase. Is it that we need a commodity to be able to act as a silver bullet? Because what we have always had are commodities like crude oil acting like a silver bullet, you know, just like the Dutch tulip mm. acted as a silver bullet many years ago. So, but now that crude oil is at a certain level, not what we want, is it that we need another commodity to buffer 
because the price changes when you read the CBN report has led to this inflation rate. 11.4 percent. Yeah, yes, there, there has been a, an increase, but it's very marginal, though. Mm. You know, from 11.3 to 11.4. Zero point zero three. Try to yeah. stabilize it down. Yeah, it's not a good indicator, but again, it's not. Uh, it's not something that should alarm us in terms of the quantum of increase. But having said that, we need to understand the variables that drive inflation. Consumer price index. Now, you have I mean, where there is no output growth, where productivity is an issue. You could have challenges on the supply side. And when you have supply side challenges, prices are bound to go up. That is one. Secondly, when you look at the cost of operation in this economy, the cost is huge. When you take the cost of transportation, because we are talking about general price level, to move product from one point to the other. I acknowledge some investment that has been taking place in terms of uh, road transportation across the country. But we still have a huge deficit in terms of road infrastructure. And over 90% of our freight and movement of people in the country is dependent on road. Mm -hmm. To that extent, the transportation cost in the economy is a major factor in the price level. That is also a, a, an issue. Then, of course, cost of operation, cost of diesel. I mean, if you are in a business, you are not, you are not in a business for charity. You are in a business so that you can make profit. So, so you have you, to factor. So, so you think all of that All these costs. Also. Of course. These are critical issues. Then there is the monetary side of it. Because if there is too much of injection of liquidity into a system, either because the fiscal deficit is growing, or because the money supply is growing, or because the CBN is printing money, all those things also have inflationary implications. So there are a whole lot of issues. But I know on the monetary side, over close to three years, there have been very serious issues about monetary policy tightening. Mm. And the whole idea is to ensure that there is management of liquidity. The CBN has been doing quite a lot in that area. I'd like to thank you. So I want to mm. second, we'll still have to have you here to talk about these issues even more. But I'd like to thank <laughs> okay. you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, thank you. For, for being here. So. Muda Yusuf, Muda the Yusuf director, I should say. <laughs> Muda the director general of the Lagos <laughs> Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Well, that brings us to the end of the show today. So many thanks to you for watching. I am Adesua Omoran. And I'm Rafael Goodbye. <laughs>